Boom. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Mount Mograph. As always, my name's Matt. You might have forgotten because it's been a while and I'm pretty bad with uploading. But anyway, uh, today we've got a video and it is Summit 78, five of my favorite underground tips or tricks inside of Adobe After Effects. And these are the things I've just randomly found out or literally one of them I accidentally found out. And they've been really, really helpful. Uh, don't use them all the time, but when I do, I love them. So uh, let's say you've imported some footage and for whatever reason it imports like this. Like you have your, your graphics, but uh, you know, your stroke, your fill is all not separated or you're just having issues. So if this is not the art style you're looking for as I make this beautiful, uh, you're gonna wanna do some work. And a lot of people like group it or uh, just put it in a comp together. And that's a great option. Putting it in a comp is normally what I do too, but there's like another little step you can do to make it even easier to work with um, after it's in a comp. So if you selected your layers, you would just uh, just like normal do shift command C to pre-compose your layer. And there we go. So we've got our pre-comp. And as you can see, the issue is if you can like see that it takes up the entire layer. So it's still the space of the entire composition. And what we want to do is make this like more manageable so we can actually like animate it with it and we're not constantly like having to shy it to click something underneath it. So uh, what you do is you actually click into your comp and down at the bottom here, we have this tiny little button that says region of interest. So what we do with that is you draw over your uh, graphics. And for whatever reason, in the last version, uh, it doesn't actually keep your graphics visible. So you're kind of making a region of interest over uh, just blackness. But uh, yeah, if you can get your graphics uh, where you want, uh, you just leave it like that and you go up into composition and you go down and you click uh, crop comp to region of interest right here. So when you do that, uh, you're now your composition is trim to the size of your graphics and when you click back to your astronaut layer whatever it is if you're not making the same thing you're going to see that now um our like window size for this your composition size is uh way more like easy to click and i can still click other stuff on the page so that's a pretty nice tip the one oddity with that for another weird reason is it actually will like push it over in your position so you got to like realign your graphics <laughs> So coming in at number two is something I found out by utter accident. I'd never heard about it in all my time working with After Effects over the years. So this was something that as soon as I found out, my jaw kind of dropped. So I hope you have the same uh, kind of feeling. So when you have a path of any kind, uh, you can animate it and that's a lot of fun. Sometimes it can get pretty frustrating working with all this. And obviously we can do like batch selections and change the, the path points in position just like this. And so we'll get the, like, you know, that's nice, whatever. Uh, but it can become really, really powerful if you have selected a couple of your paths or, or vertices on your path and you actually double click them, you get a transform box. And I found that out by accident and I was like, what the hell? Um, pardon my language, but now you can actually rotate your points and animate them just like this. So this opens up just so many new options for uh, like tons of stuff if you wanna animate like this. And especially when you can do stuff like scale, um, it's so much fun to use. So this has been really, really helpful for me working with like uh, masks if you're maybe like tracking text on the screen for a commercial or something like that. And um, yeah. Speaking of paths, here's one that is a primitive, <laughs> What a segue. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, we have a primitive uh, shape and if you hold command, you can toggle down and see everything. If you right click your path, I told you there's a segue, you uh, can convert it to a Bezier path. And what's nice about that is then you can keyframe the individual um, vertices and you're not limited to just that uh, primitive shape. So unfortunately I used my last uh, path segue joke for the last trick. So this one doesn't get it, but it's still about paths. And I think this one's pretty helpful. If you'd ever like to use your uh, like path vertices for more than just vertices, you can actually grab that data and uh, paste it onto other objects. So if I go down to my position of just this uh, little circle object here and I paste it, we're going to get the keyframes and all these keyframes are actually uh, the vertices on uh, my path. So I can go from there and actually like retime it, move it um, and just make it a lot easier to have like a base uh, direction or movement uh, for an object. So I think that's a pretty helpful uh, weird tip, but uh, on to the next one. 
So this last one is one of my very favorites actually, and it's really awesome for data visualization and pretty much anything where you're trying to build complex expressions. Uh, what you can actually do is route your expression into a text layer. So if I wanted to uh, like find the distance between these two objects and, and show it maybe for uh, some product video or something like that, I could just go into my source text here and add the little expression. So we'll just do position one, and then we will pick whip the X property here and then we'll uh, make another one. So position two equals if I can type here and uh, we'll grab the second X value and then we'll just do math dot absolute. So that's the absolute difference between these two. It's going to be position one minus position two. And then when I leave it, you're going to see we have this number. So this is actually going to be a live feed to you if you're writing an expression or you want uh, like linked uh, text and uh, feedback and stuff. So I think this is really, really nice and super helpful. I use it mostly for expressions, uh, but I think for data visualization, it might come in handy. Anyway, this was Matt from Mount MoGraph. Thanks so much for checking out the channel. If you liked the video, leave a like, a comment, or uh, share it, whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, and I'll catch you later. Peace.